hook baits, uh, along with rigs, are probably one of the most talked about things uh, in carp fishing. Uh, yeah, it goes on and on forever. And uh, I think it's always a good idea to talk about the past because it influences the future. And uh, I came from an era where there weren't that many carp around. Um, you know, where you'd fish waters where one or two bites in a year would be a wonderful thing. And everything was about camouflage. Everything we did. Um, I remember using 12 pound Maxima mainline, 12 pound hook links, smaller hooks, uh, longer hairs to get the hook bait away from the hook bait. And using a hook bait that was very, very similar, or if not identical, to that which we were putting in the water. Now, we all credit carp with being able to split the atom and pass any university course you want to throw at it. And nothing could be further from the truth. The reason a hook bait is sorted out is because of its mouth. The way that its mouth is made, <clears throat> the way that that operates, all the little flanges, <clears throat> little edges in there that sort out the stuff it wants to eat from the stuff that it doesn't. And one of the things it doesn't want to eat is a hook. It may well want to keep that hook bait, but the hook bait, the hook will be ejected. I don't believe, and this is just a personal thing, there's a carp on this planet that knows what a hook is. And let me tell you why. Uh, <clears throat> a fish swims into your swim, swims over your bait, and it's, you know, we get so many ideas given to us that these carp are looking for hooks, looking for hook links, line, maybe a lead yet you've stuck a massive big yellow, white or pink over flavoured pop-up over the top. Uh, and people suggest they'll, they'll flee if they see the hook or a hook link. They'll, they'll flee if they sense there's a lead or a line there. Are you telling me that a white hook bait or a yellow one or a pink one vastly over flavoured that resembles nothing that, that carp, uh, you've wanted that carp to eat in terms of free offering, isn't going to be frightened of, of, of that. Well, no, it isn't, because they obviously eat them, whatever colour they are. Uh, and I've always said, uh, to me, it's more important about where you put that hook bait than what colour it is, what flavour it is. Uh, it's where you put it where they're prepared to feed with, with some gusto. That's why things get cleared up. And let's face it, let's be honest here, carp fishing uh, and the way it's done is very often a very dedicated follower of fashion. If, uh, if people say a yellow hook bait, for instance, is working, then that's what everybody's going to start using. And my idea of hook baits goes, uh, goes back many, many years. I remember uh, Dave Lane, Keith Jenkins, Reg Bampton, myself going up to uh, Manor on the Linear Fishers ticket back in 1996. Everybody on there, because of some influence, was using yellow hook baits. Uh, we used the old Activate from, uh, from Mainline Baits. Uh, a dour brown colour, bottom baits, not pop-ups, either 15 or 18 mil, uh, and we caught just as many, or if not more, than everybody else on the lake. So, to me, it's never, ever been about the colour. To me, it's about where you place it. But hook baits are important nonetheless, and uh, there's many reasons that's so. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying this series with Carpology, bearing my soul and sharing my thoughts with you all. Uh, now, if you want to follow this series, you have to subscribe to Carpology and press the bell icon, and then you'll get to see it all. So what hook baits do I use? Well, I use a little bit of everything. Uh, the only thing I will say is I've never used a wafter, and there's a, a very, very good reason for that. Um, many years ago, we tried to make our hook bait behave as a boily um, does when you fire it out as a free offering, one you expect them to eat. Uh, I remember back in the Horton Lodge in 1996, myself and Keith Jenkins microwaving them, trying to get them to sink very, very slowly indeed. What we were trying to do was make that boily that you'd attach to the hair behave very similarly to the one uh, that, that you, you uh, chucked out there with a throwing stick or a catapult as a free offering, one you expected them to eat. Um, and then the colour thing came into it and uh, all that messing about with, um, uh, with, with, the, with the microwave went out the window for me and 
Uh, as much as I said something about fashion earlier on, and I'm loath to admit it, I, I maybe followed fashion to a certain degree uh, ever since because I started to attach a little bit of foam, a little bit of rubber or whatever, or half a pop-up to my bottom base. I didn't care what colour it was. I was never, ever bothered about what colours they were, which I'll come on to in a minute. It was there simply to negate the weight of the hook. And I still do it today. That's my bottom bait set up. Uh, there's a little mainline topper on top. I don't mind if it's yellow, pink or white. The colour is irrelevant to me. It's there to negate the weight of the hook. If by chance can't feed by their, uh, by their eyesight, which I don't believe that much, to be honest with you, uh, then I've covered that base too. But in the main, it's still there to get rid of the weight of the hook. Now, I do it with my pop-ups too, on stiff link pop-ups. Again, with a mainline topper, you can use a, a little bit of plastic, a little bit of rubber if you want. And again, colour's not important to me. I put it on top of the pop-up. One, it makes the, the pop-up even more pop upable if you like. It will last that much longer. If I want to leave it there on a spot for 36 hours or 48 hours, I can. And I have the confidence to leave it there knowing that it's a pop-up and not uh, a pop-up that's become a balanced bottom bait. Um, and that, that's the reason for, for, my, for my yellow bits. I use the little uh, dumbbells um, for, for my bottom baits simply because of their durability. They're an awful lot harder than the free offerings I, I take out of the freezer bag. Uh, and these little mainline hybrid dumbbells have caught me so many carps set up in that way. Um, <clears throat> today, uh, I'm using Ziggs. Uh, I'm not a great zig fisherman, uh, but um, last year, fishing at Willow Park as I am right now, fishing in a swim, uh, uh, I caught a 24 pound mirror from back in 1994, all those years ago, and there's a little, uh, little pile of bricks over there that was here back then. Um, and I'm using zigs today, and they need colours as well, and I was told that red <clears throat> was the one, uh, much as I was told the white was the one last year. Uh, I used anything but the colors that people told me were fashionable. And again, all I was looking for was the right depth. I'd put three out there, one at three foot, one at four foot, one at five foot. And whatever depth I got a bite on that day, I put all three of them at that depth, cast them out, and it kept the bites coming. It didn't matter what color it was. And I made sure I didn't, I really didn't use the color that was fashionable on the day. Now, there's one other thing with hook baits that people try to do. I've talked about putting a very, very obvious hook bait in there, and uh, I find it so difficult to do. If, as everybody believes, a carp is frightened of your hook link, a hook, a lead, and line, as I've said before, then why stick a white hook bait on that looks absolutely nothing like the free offerings you're expecting it to pick up. It, it defies belief to, to me, to be honest with you, and proves, I think, to a great degree that uh, the carp aren't quite as intelligent as you think. And the other thing they do is dip them, sometimes for months, years, uh, in, in a dip. They're wonderful bits of kit, but I don't want to over-emphasize to a carp which one is my hook bait, because wouldn't that uh, instill a little bit of danger, a little give them some kind of alert to, to, to what's going on? To me, it would. I'm not a carp. Maybe I shouldn't try and think like one, but uh, it's very, very difficult not to. I use the dips in the main to get any nasty niffs that I may have off of my hands. Uh, I don't want to over egg the, the hook bait at all. Uh, there's every temptation in the winter to do it because it just kicks off a little bit more smell. And probably that's the only time that I would put something out a little more smelly, maybe in the in the depth of winter. But, uh, you know, if, if I'm fishing in the winter, mainly on a water I don't know, it'll be Ziggs. If I know it, then I would have been going and baiting up. Uh, I would have been there as regular as I could be to keep some bait going in the water. So dips for me are about getting rid of things that any uh, smells that I might have put onto that hook bait while I was baiting up and uh, and before I cast it out. And that, for me, seems to work. Does it need to be more complicated than that? Uh, to me, no, it doesn't. 
Uh, and I always believe that the less complicated I make things, the more attention I can give to the things that are important in carp fishing. And I'll always say it, and I'll probably say it in everything I say to you, it's where you put the damn thing that's more important of the colour or of the smell. Uh, and it's the ability to do that uh, uh, that, that, that makes carp fishing so successful. On the more overstocked commercial fisheries, uh, and it's worth talking about. Maybe you need to get their attention uh, very quickly uh, and get that competition going uh, as fast as you can because they will compete for their food, which in my book makes it even less important to, to make that hook bait so obvious. Things are going to get eaten when uh, you maybe got 100, 200 carp competing for the bait that you've put in. And uh, I guess it's my history uh, where I've come from in carp fishing, <clears throat> you know, Horton back in the day when it was rock hard, it was silly hard back then, uh, moving on to the car park and Raysbury place, you know, Raysbury was 125 acres of water with 15 carp in it. It, it was crazy. Uh, the last thing any of us ever thought about was what our upbait looked like. Uh, it was trawling all over those massive stretches of water, finding the right place to put the upbait. And that is what will always count for me. And uh, I think it's those uh, inbuilt ethics of carp fishing uh, that have been so ingrained in me that make me the way they are, that, that I am. And I'm, but I'm not suggesting that laid up baits don't work. They obviously do. Uh, and they change as and when fashion dictates. But uh, I think it just proves it doesn't matter what colour you put on, uh, the carp are still prepared to take it. But uh, just always remember to put it in the right place, first of all. One of the most regular questions I suppose I get asked is uh, when do I use a particular hook bait uh, and there are reasons for it uh, and I'll come to reasons why not yeah, in a minute. Obviously uh, a pop-up is used and this is just from my point of view when I'm fishing over a spread of boilies. So I've got a big silty gully between a couple of bars and I put a, a, a little stifling pop-up behind it and I want to spread the, bo the boilies out around it. That is when I'll use a pop-up. When I want the bait to be a little bit tighter, say in holes in the weed or smaller little gravel spots or whatever I'm fishing, then I'm going to use my PVA bag uh, and a little bottom bait. And those are really the only times that I change what I do. They're all tipped with a little bit of uh, coloured foam or a, a topper. Um, and they're, they're all just to, to balance the, the rig out itself. And uh, there's no other reason that I think of changing it. I use bottom baits in silt. People say that um, you should use a pop-up in silt. Well, I, I, I totally disagree. Or, or I should use a longer a hook link. I disagree with that too because I still get bites out of it. And remember, with my PVA setup, I use uh, a string bag full of maybe 10 and 15 mil boilies with, some, with some, maybe a few response pellets in there. A much too uh, popular um, the, 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 the uh, reflection of that is that it's so heavy it sinks into the silt. That PVA bag actually slows it down and acts like a parachute and why it became known as the parachute rig many years ago. It actually slows it down. You, you feel that lead down with no bag on it when you're finding a spot and it'll go down quite quickly. You whack it out with a bag, feel it down and it will take noticeably longer to hit the bottom so it lets it nestle nearer the top of the silt and uh, I've never had a problem. Pop-ups or bottom baits in the silt, on the gravel, in the weed, wherever. Um, that They've always worked. And I think one of the, the best examples I've got of that is fishing up at Farrier's Lake, um, uh, the Carp Society's Lake up on the Cotswolds. Uh, I just changed, uh, just on a whim, from pop-ups to bottom baits every now and again, and nothing changed the amount of bites I got, which was an awful lot with... Uh, many fish up to well over 46 pound and uh, yeah it was incredible but it gave me it's those little moments like that that give you so much confidence in the things you do and it's something that you can't put in a bowl 
It's something that you can't dip your hook bait in. It's something you can't set up differently on a rig. Confidence is what you get inside with the things that you're doing. Don't be led by what everybody's doing. Find out for yourself what works and stick with it. Maybe you can you can better it as, as time develops, but I, I still fish with the same ideas I had 35, 40 years ago, uh, which were pretty uh, caveman-like back then. So you can imagine that people look at my setups in this day and age. But they still work. And again, I, I'll say it, it must bore people to death. It's where I put it that counts, not what I've got connected to my hook. The size of the hook bait uh, could be a, an issue with a lot of people, and it, and it has been with me. And uh, again, it, it's all part of that thought process, uh, building up to the things that I, I have so much confidence in. I think, like any man, biggest is best. Uh, I can't get away from that thought. Uh, it's just unfortunately the way things have gone with bait in, in, in the carp fishing world, uh, I've had to rethink that. A bigger hook bait is more difficult for a carp to deal with. I don't think there can be any argument about that. The problem is, is actually getting the fish to pick it up in the first place. There's been such a massive change in the bait that people are throwing out there uh, and a lot of it revolves around very small seeds and hemp um, and, and sweet corn maybe and uh, obviously there's a bit of maize thrown in there as well. All very, very small items for a carp to eat. Now I am a boily angler. I haven't used particles for 20 years and to try and uh, erase the, 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 the fact that carp are, try, are eating only small items. I started to use 10 mil boilies uh, along with my 15 mil free offerings. And uh, what I was trying to do with the 10 millers was to keep the, the carp there longer and feeding um, because it was so easy to come in, maybe you pick up 50, uh, 50, 15 millers and disappear. With the smaller baits, they've got to stay there longer. The longer they are there, the more likely they are to pick up your hook bait. Now, the 10 and 15 millers gave me options for hook baits. Maybe I could use two 10 millers on a hair, a 10 miller, a 15 miller, or a combination of both. It just gave me an opportunity to, to change things around a little bit. Um, I would prefer to use a bigger bait. I, I, I rarely use the double 10 mil option. I'd rather put three or four on there if I could, or, or two 15 millers. It's, it's an awkward bait for a carp system to eject it and get rid of. Uh, and all that does is keep the hook in the carp's mouth longer. And again, the longer it's there, the more likely you are to hook it. And uh, yeah, size isn't everything, but it is certainly something we should all think about. One of the biggest things that puzzles me most of all about bright hook baits or, or the choice of any hook bait really is when someone says, I reeled in and I changed the color of my hook bait and put it back on the spot. And an hour later, I got a bite. Who in the world can tell you that you wouldn't have got a bite if you'd have left the original hook bait in at uh, exactly that time? Uh, there's nothing that can say that. If it fills you with confidence uh, to do it, then, then do it by all means. But nothing will ever influence me to think that you got the bite because of the colour. I think it's in spite of. And uh, unfortunately, I think that's the way it's always going to be for me. Okay, I'll save this one to last because uh, one, it probably it's uh, the one that needs the least amount said about it and uh, it will leave me anyway with a smile on my face. Uh, these two-tone baits where they've made them with, with a, a little purple streak uh, going through a white boilie or a, a yellow one with a red streak in it. What a load of rubbish. Uh, a carp uh, can't see um, this is through the experts, not through my finding, between 8 and 10 inches in front of its nose. So you can't tell me that in the middle of the night it, it's having a look at that and that is making any difference. Uh, it's something that I believe totally makes absolutely no difference at all uh, when it comes to catching a carp.
that really is my thoughts on hook baits. Again, it's the same as all aspects of carp fishing. Find things that you're confident in and use them. And uh, please remember, if you want to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can see all the things I've got to say in the future.